Hello everybody, my name is Matthew North and I'm from Calgary, Canada. I'm a partner in an architecture and construction company called House Brand and I'm an expert in residential design. About a year ago, I started producing a series of videos called Plan Attack and the premise is really simple. I basically take a floor plan, I explain what I think is wrong with it and then I proceed to fix it. And it has become a huge global hit. I have people watching from all around the world and I encourage people to add their comments and participate in the design process with me by saying what they like and what they don't like about what I've done. We also do group design challenges where we all work on a floor plan together to try to come up with different solutions and options. So Morfolio Trace is such an excellent app for me because I am old school. I love to draw by hand. I love using a scale ruler. I love layering the trace paper and I can do all of that in Morfolio Trace but in a digital format. So without further ado, here is the Morfolio Trace episode of Plan Attack. Hello everybody, today we're gonna to fix the floor plan of this 838 square foot, two bedroom high rise apartment in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Now, this is the first episode that I've done entirely in the Morfolio Trace app for architects. So I've got my Apple Pencil and my iPad Pro all ready to go. So let's start out by looking at some of the design problems with the initial layout. Starting out with the front entry, when you walk in the front door, there is a door swing conflict with the door to the laundry space. You often see that the laundry is right in the front entry and that can be a problem because if you are doing laundry and the door is open, you're gonna smack into the door, which is never a good idea. I also think the front entry closet is really small and there's not a lot of storage for a unit of this size. The kitchen location in the back corner is not bad. It's an L-shaped kitchen, which I think is fine. It's also implied that there would be a dining table placed in the alcove of the kitchen, which I think is actually a logical place. However, it does cause problems for the rest of the furniture layout. Look at the door to the terrace. It is an in-swing door, which means that you can't really put any furniture in this central zone. Also, the access to the secondary bedroom is directly from that principal room, which is never a good idea. The biggest problem with the living space is the fact that the living room furniture has to all fit in a square about this size, which is actually smaller than the secondary bedroom. It's not a very well proportioned living room space. I also think that the closet opposite the bathroom is kind of an odd design. There's only a little bit of hanging storage and a lot of floor space, which isn't very functional. The master suite to me is one of the biggest issues. You can kind of see where they've dotted in where they think the bed should go and it's kind of on this diagonal. And when you walk in the door, you're gonna smack right into the bed, which I think is really not very functional. The reason why the bed has to go there is because somebody thought it was a good idea to put the closet as this kind of carbuncle in the corner and that really screws up the furniture layout for the entire room. So there is a lot of room for improvement here. So we're gonna work on the plan together I've done a little bit of work in advance. I'm just gonna show you here because I can change the opacity so you can see the original plan and then I can kind of ghost out the original plan and you can see the lines that I've changed for the upper plan. So this is the really big move that I've done off the bat and what I have done is I've shrunk the size of the bathroom and I'm gonna use the Morfolio scale ruler because it's such a good feature. So the original bathroom is actually six foot six in width which is a foot and a half wider than it really needs to be. We can shrink that down to five feet and still get a good size uh, shower and still have lots of room in the bathroom. And what that does is it gives us a whole extra foot and a half in the living space, which is really important. The other thing that I've done is I have pushed back the wall from this walk-in closet back about a foot and I put the laundry opposite the bathroom which is a more functional location and plus we can have some hanging storage in that corner closet as well. So interestingly enough if we do a couple other little things beforehand you can see I've moved the door to the secondary bedroom so that it's against this outer wall just to give it a little bit more privacy from the living space and I've tucked the closets opposite the door and I'm using millwork closets. I've also put the front Front entry closets back up against where the laundry area is that gives us a bigger area in the front entry so now let's work on the design of the living space I think the kitchen is actually in a really good location and I'm gonna keep it and everybody knows from watching the videos that if we change the location of the kitchen or the bathrooms we have to have a good reason because the cost of changing the plumbing and the appliances is actually really expensive so we don't want to really 
change it too much, but I'm gonna just make one kind of major suggestion to the layout of the kitchen, and it has to do with the peninsula. I'm actually gonna add a peninsula, so I'm gonna make it into an L-shaped kitchen. And I'm just gonna use the eraser here. This is the great thing about Morfolio, is that you can go backwards and you can erase if you are working on something and you have to back out a little bit. So I'm gonna make a three foot peninsula, which is amazing because three feet allows you to sit on the end of the peninsula and it also allows you just regular storage on the back side. So I'm just gonna draw this up. I'm gonna show you what I'm doing in a sec here. There's also an interesting little development that I've done. I have actually added 12 inches of space to this HVAC duct so the peninsula can die into that drywall corner. Now, interestingly enough, I still have a good three foot six of room between the fridge and the back side of the cabinet, which is appropriate. Now, we're gonna draw in some of the other appliances and I'm gonna put the sink in the peninsula, which I think is the best location for it, and I'll show you why in just two secs. And then next to that, I am going to put the dishwasher, and I love the dotted line function on the Morfolio Trace app. I'm one of the worst dotted line drawers of all time. I'm very shaky, I've got shaky hands, so now that it's an actual like function that I can get a perfect dotted line at any time, I've been so happy. So I'm also gonna move the cooktop into the L of the kitchen because when it was right next to the fridge, it seemed like there wasn't enough room on either side of it. And then we can add upper cabinets all the way down the whole L of the kitchen. So I'm gonna zoom out and I'm gonna show you why I have done this in terms of the bigger idea of the space. So if I am in the kitchen, oops, I just moved the drawing there a little bit, I'll move it back. If I'm standing at the sink, this is my head, those are my big feet, and I'm at the sink, I now have a view out towards the view of the terrace, Plus I can see what's happening in the living room, which I think is fantastic and very, very important. So let's go on and let's start to work on the dining room and the living room furniture placement. And this is actually also very, very important. I'm gonna start by placing the dining table. Now, interestingly enough, we have, and I've got this on a different layer so I can move this around. So there's actually lots of room for the dining table now because since I pushed the kitchen back a little bit, I'm now gonna be well clear of the door. But you have to work on the dining table and the living room furniture grouping kind of simultaneously. So I'm gonna bring up the sofa for the living room. And the problem with the dining table being in the upright position is that there is not enough space between the dining table and the uh, living room sofa. There's only two feet of space, which is, that's not gonna work. So I'm gonna get rid of the living room sofa and I'm gonna rotate the table and I'm gonna place it so that it actually is got enough room against the back wall. We're gonna make sure we've got enough clearance. I've got two and a half feet off the back wall. I'm gonna make sure I clear the door and I'm away from the peninsula. Now the thing that is really great about this is now I can actually have stools or eating bar stools on the peninsula so I can sit and have a glass of wine and talk to the cook. And people can also be sitting at the dining table so there's lots of room for that. So now just placing in the sofa, interestingly enough, we have kind of two options for the sofa. We can have it against the outer wall like that. The challenge with that is where do you put the TV? You don't have anywhere to sort of place the TV. So if you're gonna have a TV, I think the best idea is to place the L that way. And we can put the television on this piece of wall opposite the sofa, and we can put an end table next to the sofa, and then we can put a big coffee table, which is fantastic. So I'm really happy with the living room and dining room furniture grouping that way. So let's finish off with the master bedroom. This is one of my biggest problems with this whole unit design. If the bed goes against the wall, you walk in the door and you smack into it. So I'm gonna suggest that we rotate it, and we actually get it onto the wall that is adjoining the bathroom. I've moved the door over a little bit to accommodate that. So I'm just gonna actually, just gonna move this over just a little bit more. I'm gonna rub out that line and I'm going to make myself enough room for a night table next to our king size bed. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And then the cool thing is, is I have enough room because I've left enough space. Two feet of space is what I need. I'm gonna use my trusty ruler to put a wardrobe closet against the wall. And this is really important because what I've done is I've deleted that closet that was there before because it was kind of a carbuncle. And I'm gonna suggest that we use a wardrobe closet, which is actually sort of a freestanding piece of millwork as the closet module in this room. And I think that is a good idea. We can even close it into the wall so there isn't that little gap. And we can finish off by putting a really nice chair in the corner, which actually be a great place to read. So this is what I think 
we should do to redesign this 838 square foot two bedroom high rise apartment in Sao Paulo. Now, I also have an option B. So look at option A and option B. There are some differences in how the layout is done. I would love for you guys to leave a comment and let me know which option you prefer. And I'd also love to hear your opinions about this overall design.